and welcome to Speaking Spectroscopy, the new podcast from Edinburgh Instruments. This is episode one of series one, and in this episode we attended ICAVS, and you'll hear um, from Angela and Matthew on their feelings and thoughts from that event, which was in Poland. We hope you enjoy. Hi, I'm Angela Black and I'm the Product Specialist here in Vibration Spectroscopy at Edinburgh Instruments. I'm Matthew Berry and I'm the Vamal Application Scientist. Today we're going to talk about attending a conference recently called ICAVS. It was hosted in Krakow, Poland and the focus of this conference was vibrational spectroscopy, so both infrared and Raman spectroscopies. We took the RM5. So for me, I was looking very much so from a product point of view as to how researchers are currently using their Raman instruments and their IR instruments and what we perhaps need to implement into our microscopes because as time goes on, it will start off as high level research, but it will then become more of an industrial application. For me, I had goals as an application scientist, but also just as a scientist. So as the Raman application scientist, I wanted to learn more about the applications that people are using Raman for, mm -hmm. what instruments are they using, how are they doing their experiments, how are they processing and displaying their data. But just out of general interest, I also want to learn a lot more about IR spectroscopy because I don't have a background in it. Mm -hmm. So learning about why people use it, why they want to use it, what they use it for. And also when you're in a conference with distinguished professors in the field, it's good to see the most advanced innovations that are occurring in the field. So as the product specialist, the main areas I went to was advances in instrumentation. So this is very much to see where the interest is in how we can keep developing our instrumentation to keep it relevant to researchers around the world. Another session I spent a lot of time in was the microplastic session, mm -hmm. which again is a very hot topic at the moment. And focusing on people that were talking about doing multiple techniques, especially multi multimodal imaging. I attended over 50 talks in the week, so there was a mix of perspective lectures where, which were people giving their view of a field over decades. There were plenary lectures which were invited professors who would speak for about 30 minutes. They were cutting edge research, that was the most advanced you could get really. And then in the parallel sessions which Angela was discussing, I attended the applications section. Mm -hmm. So that included 15 minute invited talks by professors and then also 10 minute talks by PhD students. And the main takeaway that I got was the power of machine learning combined with vibrational spectroscopy. It's used in a whole host of different applications. So our posters were very different. Mine's was on um, Raman for forensics and cultural heritage. So a lot of the posters were very deep dives into single topics, but mine was a very broad poster that covered four different topics that are worth posters on their own, basically. Mm -hmm. So covered drug detection and forensics, financial frauds, art and archaeology, and had a lot of good conversations with people. They generally came up to me and just wanted to hear the story of the poster. And when they found out that I was from a company, they were very interested in learning about how we do research in our labs as an instrument manufacturer. My poster focused on multimodal imaging of 2D materials. I've been to an ICAVS before in person back in 2018, I think, maybe. And back then, there was a very big focus on biomedical sciences, how we can implement these techniques into the clinic. However, at this conference, we've seen a lot more inclusion of other topics such as microplastics and materials such as the 2D materials I presented in graphene. So it was a much smaller audience that were interested in my poster as a whole for the whole conference. However, there were some people who were just there for materials and they obviously came up and were quite interested. And specifically, were, they were interested in the second harmonic generation imaging that we've done on the samples and what information that can provide additionally to the Raman that they've typically been using. So yeah, so when they find out that we were from, my poster was from a company as well, it more moved on to the conversation of how do we suit the instruments to high level research? Because a lot of people at this conference will build their own Raman systems so that they can keep adapting them constantly. 
So it was the interest of, oh, you've managed to do several techniques with the one Raman microscope. How are you keeping your microscope so flexible? And can we keep adding more to it? So the talk I enjoyed the most was very different to every other talk at the conference. So it was by a professor called Axel Mossig from Brewer, Brewer University, Bochum. And it was called Theory is Dead, Long Live Theory. And it sounded really abstract, but it was essentially about the philosophical arguments behind using AI um, for medical diagnostics. And he basically argued that you can't use it alone. You have to still have theory. Mm -hmm. It was very complex and thought provoking, but I found it much more engaging than someone just presenting data, which I also enjoyed that people present their data, but th this was a very engaging one to me. For me, as I mentioned before, the microplastics topic is quite interesting to me. And in particular, because we still don't actually know the potential effect these could have on human health. So one of the talks that was presented was about monitoring these plastics and how they affected cell life on liver cells. And interestingly, but also very worryingly, the cells themselves couldn't be penetrated by the plastics, but just the plastics being on the outside of the cells was enough to cause damage for them to die. There had to be a certain like concentration of the plastics for this to happen, but it wasn't a significantly high concentration as you would hope. So it was both worrying, but interesting to see we were starting to do a bit more research into the human effect of the microplastics, not just environmental. So we were obviously advertising multimodal. So we had our ebook and we had the back wall multimodal. People were pretty interested in that. Um, we got a few questions about phlegm from people who weren't strictly vibrational spectroscopists, but they were interested to hear that we could do both on our random microscopes and also second harmonic generation. Um, and it seemed that a theme throughout the conference that multimodal spectroscopy was pretty popular. So a lot of the talks, people weren't just using one technique, they were using multiple. So I felt like we had a good standing there. So I'd completely agree with Matthew. The multimodal thing was very popular. But also, as this is Edinburgh Instruments' first in-person ICABs, we're still seeking some brand recognition for Raman. Most of the Raman microscope companies have been around for years and years. We launched one, the RM5 in 2019, and the RMS1000 in 2020. So it's been difficult to get brand recognition because we couldn't go to conferences for such a long time. So we had a lot of people asking how new we were in the field and really asking about the specs of our microscope. How do they compare to the microscopes that are already out there and available? So that was another big focus of the conversation and just generally about who we are as a company. So one of the main things we had to highlight is that we're not brand new. People thought we were perhaps completely new because the fluorescence and Raman fields are quite different and the academics don't necessarily intermingle. Although I would say that's happening more, especially like Matthew said before, people asking about fluorescence lifetime imaging. All the sectors are starting to cross over a bit, but people weren't aware of Edinburgh Instruments as a whole really in this community. So I was explaining that we've been around for over 50 years, but now we're expanding the business into Raman and we're also starting to expand into infrared as well. Well, for me, a key takeaway was that not everyone there was a vibrational spectroscopist. So it felt like the community was trying to reach out. Also, people want a lot from their software. So because the techniques are so information rich, they, they want to be able to do a lot of classification with their software. And that's, that is the main technical takeaway that I got from. My key takeaway was very much more and more and more. They want instruments that can do as many techniques as possible. So our approach with the multimodal RMS1000 is spot on, is what I kind of gathered from this conference. But also we need to keep looking into what else we could add. And exactly as Matthew said, it's great to see that they're expanding a bit more, not just in the biomedical imaging, but expanding into all these other topic areas, meaning that the field can continue to grow and get a good crossover of different scientists with different backgrounds. We're not just chemists anymore. There's biologists, there's physicists, there's engineers all coming together now. Just pretty 
pretty much repeating what I've said, exactly seeing as how this conference continues to grow. It'll be very interesting to see if we get even more topics on materials. Materials in particular have always been a strong point of Edinburgh Instruments, is where a lot of our fluorescent spectrometers are used. So it's quite nice to bring everything together. And it's also being held in China. So we'll be attending with our parent company, TechComp. So it'll be good to attend that with our parent company and monitor how much we're, the conference is expanding away from just being focused on biomedicine. Everything Angela said, hoping the multimodal trend continues and the conference continues to expand, but also as we expand, that we could have our instruments mentioned in talks and even give our own talks as well, which would be great. It was my first time visiting Krakow, so it was nice to go to a new city. It's one of the exciting things about going to conferences is you get to see more of the world. And in particular, they had free um, public transport for everybody included in their pass. So that was really good to be able to go around and explore the city for free, especially because the conference location at the university wasn't in the city centre. So it was good that you could easily go to the conference and then get the tram into the town at night and explore all the really good food places. I have actually been to Krakow before, but it was in February. Ah. It was minus 10, so it was about 25 degrees. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, it was just lovely to be able to walk about at night and stuff. That was Speaking Spectroscopy, the podcast from Edinburgh Instruments. We hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for further episodes.